The last thing we've got to do on uh, simple harmonic motion is about damping. So things we need to know is what is damping, how does it affect an oscillation, and how can we analyse its effect. So the first thing we need to do is to establish what we mean by a damped oscillation. So far we've just pretended that we set something in motion and it just keeps oscillating forever. But obviously in the real world that's not the case. There's always a force trying to oppose the motion and that's what we call a damping force. So here's a couple of examples just to see if we can understand the basic principle. So we've got a pendulum. This is a very lightly damped system. Okay, The only thing stopping this pendulum to um, vibrate in is the air resistance. So the pendulum will uh, oscillate forwards and backwards if we pull it back and let it go. The size, the amplitude of this oscillation remains fairly constant. Obviously if you leave this going for long enough eventually then the amplitude will get smaller and smaller and smaller and it will stop. Um, but it will be quite difficult to do an experiment on that. Um, go to the other extreme, the other example you did was the um, weighted test tube and if you do the same thing with that it stops very quickly. In fact you'll remember from this experiment a lot more quickly than this really. Okay, This is because as the tube starts to move through the water there's a much bigger force opposing that motion. Um, so the amplitude dies away fairly quickly. Okay, so this is what we would call a fairly heavily damped oscillation. This is what we'd call a fairly lightly damped oscillation. Okay, so the amount of damping tells you the amount of force resisting the motion, which controls how quickly that oscillation will die away. So this is the first experiment we did for this. So uh, what we do is you get a spring, you put a mass on the bottom, a fixed mass, and then you put a card. Okay, so the crucial bit here is this card here. And what we did was to change the area of that card. You lift it up um, by a fixed amount, so 10 centimeters every time, and then you let it go and you count 20 oscillations. So what we're looking at is this, the amplitude of this is going to die away, and we're looking for the size of the 20th oscillation here, okay? So we're not analyzing this graph of amplitude against time, we're just counting the 20th oscillation to see how big it is and we're changing the area of the card, okay? Um, you don't need to know the details of this, it's just a good example for us to do a little bit of analysis using logs. Uh, because what's happening with all these oscillations is that they're decaying in a kind of exponential way. So what we did here is we, we measured x20, this is the size of the amplitude after 20 oscillations, and we measured the area of the card. So if we plotted a graph of x20 against a, this is the size of the amplitude after 20 oscillations against the area, Okay, then the graph we would get would be this sort of shape, an exponential decay. So if we had a certain area and that halved the um, amplitude after 20 oscillations, then double that area would make it a quarter as big, three times that area would make it an eighth as big, and so on. Okay, this is a nice curve graph, but we don't really want to um, get that kind of graph to do the analysis. What we want is a straight line graph. So the way we produce a straight line graph is to plot the log of x20 against area that will give us a graph that looks something like this, a straight line graph with a negative gradient. Okay, so in the experiment you then find the gradient of this graph, you then find the intercept, make sure that you're starting at the area equals zero so that this is actually is the intercept. Um, you'll get two numbers here, so your two numbers, let's say for example, might be 0 0.5 and 2.3. Okay, then you get this suggestion that um, the relationship is this kind of equation where x20 is the amplitude after 20 oscillations, x0 is the amplitude after no oscillations, uh, times e to the minus ka where a is the area and k is some constant. Okay, so you have to be able to do this analysis. Okay, x20 equals x0 e to the minus ka. Okay, take the logs of both sides, we get log of x20 equals the log of x0 and um, minus ka. Just swap that around slightly. Log of x20 equals minus ka plus the log of x0. Okay, make that look like y equals mx plus c. And hopefully you can see if we've plotted a is x, then minus k is the gradient, and log of x0 is the intercept. 
Okay, so if we took our two values, okay, then k would be minus 0 0.5, and the um, value for x0, this is where we've got to be a little bit careful here, because the intercept here is not x0, it's log x0, so we've got log x0 equals um, 2.3, uh, x0 equals e to the 2.3, uh, which is 10. Okay, so we get x0 equals 10. We knew that in the first place, because you remember when we pulled the thing up, we pulled it up by 10 centimetres. Okay, so there's an analysis of this kind of damping oscillation against area. You don't need to know this equation. You don't need to worry about the details. You do need to be able to do this kind of a log analysis, though. Okay, this is very common on ISAs, and sometimes they ask questions on the written papers.